Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of the Lit RPG Podcast. I'm Ramon Mejia, I'm here to bring you the latest Lit RPG news, reviews, and of course author interviews, and this is episode number 120 of the Lit RPG Podcast. I'm, um, thanks for being here with me. Uh, I have one new update for you, and of course six new reviews for you just this week. Uh, this week in the new releases and reviews, of course we'll be talking about a couple of things, including an update on Pendulum Heroes, uh, then on to the review of the Sneak Report. The Alchemist of Etheria will be the next one on the list after that. Then after that, it'll be Trial by Fire. Then it will be Ward God's Mantle Descend, which is the second book in the War Gods Saga series. Uh, then after that, it'll be Eden's Gate, The Arena, which is the fourth book in that series. And then, last but not least, Cities of Chains, an Apocalypse Little BG. This is the fourth book in the System Apocalypse series. Uh, so I'll begin six new reviews and just one update. Uh, before we begin that, we're going to go into Lit RPG News. Uh, and in Lit RPG news, we have a nice little bit of a deal discount for you this week from Magic Dome Books. So the nice folks who translate a bunch of Russian Lit RPG into English for the last few years, um, and then putting out some great books. Uh, Magic Dome Books has put some of the more popular titles um, on an ebook platform that isn't Amazon. Uh, they decided to go a little wider in their in their reach to more readers, and they currently put their the first books in the Way of the Shaman and the Dark Herbalist series on sale for 99 cents on Kobo.com. Uh, so if you happen to use that particular system or you just want to go check it out as an alternative to Amazon, uh, those two books there are 99 cents. If you haven't read anything in the series, um, they're both really good series. These two books in particular are, are again, um, they're really good seller because they're really entertaining and interesting and they bring a lot of interesting stuff in there. Um, so uh, they're really good deals. So by the way, also at 99 cents. So good, good purchases. Okay. Uh, also, in Little Bridge News, Daniel Schienhofen has released some more artwork for his Alpha World series. Uh, this one, uh, in this one, artist Amelia Paris represents the three, f- uh, drew representations of the three female romantic interests in the series. Um, and these are some d- definitely some very interesting re- representations. I honestly hadn't pictured the characters quite this way, personally, um, but I do find them very interesting. There you go. Um, we'll have a link in the show notes if you want to go check out that the, the larger version of that. Maybe download it to your desktop. It's a screensaver. Who knows? Uh, also, I want to give a quick shout out to Apollo Thorne, author of Underworld and the uh, Coding and Freedom series. Uh, he's going to be a full time author. He announced it this week that he's he's taken the leap into full time authorship. Uh, so I just want to give him a big congratulations. Um, it, it's a really big leap to take, and I want to wish him well. Uh, a number of Lipid authors in this last year have have taken the leap into full time this is what I do for a living and to pay all my bills kind of thing. <laughs> so including me. Uh, so I know it's challenging uh, and there, uh, there's definitely a certain amount of pressure to, to produce now because this is how you pay your bills. Uh, so I just want to wish him though. Um, good luck. And I'm always going to be a big supporter of Apollos. We, we did an author interview with him recently and it was super fun. You can always check that out at our website at littlepgpodcast.com as well. Um, but if you want to support the guy, either go buy his stuff. You can also sign up for his Patreon where you get like early um, versions of his novels as he's writing them and early releases and a bunch of other cool awards. If you want to go check it out, we'll have a link in the show notes for uh, Apollo to learn his Patreon page as well. Okay. Um, also, last bit of news, we are still taking applications for the audiobook edition of the Little RPG podcast. If you want to apply, make sure you uh, send us a video doing your review. Um, and like, we're not like paying a ton of money to do this. Uh, we're basically, uh, Jeff, this is also sponsored by Jeff Hayes of uh, of uh, the Samba Theater uh, Productions, I guess. Um, Jeff Hayes does a lot of audiobook narration. I thought it was a good idea to essentially do a, a book review, audiobook review of all the audiobooks. Um, he is more than willing to apparently just front the cost for like getting someone equipment and, and paying for the audiobooks that they're going to review. Uh, but at the same time, he and I both agreed we want this to be 100% honest reviews, um, even if they're negative for, you know, his particular audiobook production company. Um, so uh, if you are interested in that particular job, again, we are going to be paying you money uh, to do an audiobook review. Um, not a ton, but again, we'll also be paying for the audiobooks. So it, it might be a nice way to get your audiobook fix subsidized <laughs> by uh, the podcast. Uh, I'll be doing basically the editing and stuff and posting in all the technical work. Um, but it's going to be a review show. 
essentially from audiobook listeners. Um, I, I, I personally, it's hard for me to fit in another like five or six audiobooks or even like two or three a week, uh, in addition to like all the new audio uh, ebooks that come out on a weekly basis. So that's what we're kind of handing this to, to other members of the community who are interested in kind of, you know, having a voice and kind of getting their faces out there and also, you know, just giving good opinions and, and good thoughts. Uh, we've had a couple, um, submissions already some good prospects but of course we're always looking for for more people to are excited about audiobooks to come in and do this uh so please if you're interested uh feel free to message myself uh on, on facebook on twitter or jeff hayes at some feed or on facebook and twitter um or you can always just send me an email at feedback at keep at com or uh let everybody podcast at gmail.com either any of those ways you can get a hold of either jeff or myself and we'll 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 take your submission video and we'll, we'll make a decision pretty soon, hopefully. Okay. Oh, and also the background stuff. Uh, if you've noticed, you know, we have a nice backgrounds information or a new background for the podcast. Um, we're still taking votes on, on which background you like the most. Um, last week, it was like this um, looping video of uh, like a bunch of television screens. Um, some people didn't like it. Um, some people just wanted the kitchen Mac, but more people liked the background. So we're going to be keeping it now. It's just a matter of deciding which background to keep for the video version of the podcast. Um, so I'm going to have a couple different uh, backgrounds throughout this particular um, episode of the podcast. And you let us let me know in the comments. Um, Anywhere you see this, let me know in the comment section which one you like the most and the one that gets the most votes, the most great opinions. Um, that's the one we will keep. So there we go, folks. Okay, on to a few um, novels that are out now. Well, actually, there's just the one. This has actually been a really uh, a slower release week for little RPG stuff on Amazon, which is not horrible. Uh, it really isn't. There's only one I couldn't get to this week that came out called A Kill Streak, book one, Respawn. Um, it just came out the day that we're recording this particular podcast, so I just didn't have time to read it in addition to all the other stuff. Um, so, but it is out now. Okay, um, new RPG audiobooks. Um, and again, these would be the kind of titles we'd be having someone else doing four reviews, like five, six minutes on. So, uh, including The Steel Alchemist, uh, a little RPG series, which is out now. We, um, I gave the ebook version a five out of 10. It wasn't that entertaining for me. You can read the four of you, of course, on any of these pod, uh, uh, any of the ebook versions of these uh, titles. I will have a link in the show notes for them if you want to check them out. Uh, but still, Alchemist by Deck Davis out now as an audiobook. Uh, Deck Davis also put out uh, the audiobook version of The Arcane Survivalist, which was entertaining for me. Uh, for me, I got a book uh, ebook review of like seven out of 10, so I had a good time with it. Um, and also out is Stratus Online Awakening by Drew Cordell. Um, we gave it a six out of ten uh, as a review score for the ebook version of it. Uh, and last but not least, Bushido Online, Friends and Foes. That one is out as, as well. That's book two in that particular series. A lot of folks like the, the Bushido Online series, so they, you know, that was entertaining for a great many folks. Okay, uh, upcoming little RPG. Uh, these are just the titles that are going to be coming out in the near future, hopefully, um, that I know about that are on pre-order or people have told me about. And that includes on June 26th, come out End of an Era, Project Crystalis, book number two. Uh, on July 1st, Apocalypse Gates number two. That's uh, by Daniel Schienhofen, uh, called Valley of Death, with a new fancy cover art uh, cover artist who, who made that particular cover, Apocalypse Gate book two. On July the 10th, that'll be Restart, level of book number one. That's a new title from uh, Magic on Books, I believe. Um, they translate it from Russian into English. Um, and then on July the 23rd, External Threat, Reality Benders, book number two will be out. Uh, on J August the 7th, it'll be Death March, Euphoria Online, book number one. And then we get the second book in the Binding book series, uh, which will be out on August the 30th, titled Raven Vex. Uh, that's the again the second book in the binding book series. Then there we go. That's it. On to new releases and reviews. Okay, new releases and reviews, folks. We're going to begin with a quick update on Pendulum Heroes. Talked about it last week as being um, a little bit story that was coming out. Uh, at that point, um, finally had a chance to actually read it. Uh, and the author sent me, had sent me a, uh, an advanced copy for review. He was honest about it, saying he didn't expressly write it as lit RPG, but is as, quote, unquote, uh, as close as you can get uh, to being lit RPG without expressly trying. Uh, that, those were his words in the correspondence we had. Um, and he did feel like he wrote something that fit our genre, though. Uh, the author originally had part of his blurb stating uh, it's his unique take on the burgeoning little RPG genre. Um, now, is it little RPG? 
No, no, it's not. Uh, it doesn't turn out to be a little RPG. Give it a read. Um, the main characters enter this story in this um, portal fiction universe through the game that they're playing. And they get stuck in the avatars that they were playing at the time. So you get some very interesting um, gamer kind of style jokes in there. And like the main uh, one of the main characters gets stuck in the body of his female uh, avatar, who's a uh, chainmail, a uh, bikini chainmail wearing woman. Um, and everyone else is stuck in their other avatars, like an old man who's a wizard and um, some other characters who are fantasy based, but like, you know, things that people w would play as gamers, but not so if they figured, if they knew that they're going to be stuck in that body for a little while. Um, however, beyond that introduction and that tie into that game system, there really are no other um, game relationships here. Like the, the, the fantasy world that they go into is, is strictly described in terms of fantasy. There's no game powers, no RPG mechanics of any kind, no leveling up of in, in any kind of RPG fashion. Uh, all the fight, all the fights, all the magic, it's all very fantasy based. Um, and there's a whole like, um, justification in this sort of like explaining how this fantasy world is kind of grabbing people from other universes, um, for, for whatever way they're doing it. Um, and so it all makes perfect sense as far as that goes. And there are a lot of like gamer jokes and a lot of like few references, but as far as like being an RPG world or, um, it's not. So, uh, if you're looking for a little RPG story, this isn't it. And when I mentioned that to the author, he was very, you know, he was very kind about it. He's like, he, he took down the, the blurb he had in his novel, um, description saying it was a little bit related in a way, shape or form. Um, and he, he, he's nice enough to say, you know, agree that he didn't want to set up expectations that we weren't going to meet readers, um, readers expectations. Um, and he even went so far as to take an extra shop. And when somebody was mentioning it in one of the little RPG Facebook groups, he was like, Oh no, this isn't, doesn't turn out to be little RPG. Um, but you still might like it, uh, if you're into gaming and stuff. So, um, in, in that respect, um, it still is a um, pretty decent uh, portal fiction story. And I think a lot of people in the community who like portal fiction and like these kind of fantasy stories um, might enjoy it uh, too. So, But it, it is not a little So that is the update on that one. Uh, but again, no negative review because, again, the author stopped advertising as little RPG, um, you know, which is very responsible for, of him. So there you go. Okay. Uh, on to our next, uh, our first actual review, uh, The Snake Report uh, by... Um, you slash, uh, worse, worse, worse. Uh, I believe that's how it's said in the title. Uh, it's, it's a world road name. Um, so there you go. Um, here it is. It is 457 pages, $4.99. It is not available in Kindle Unlimited. Here's the author's description. All hail the tiny snake god. When life ends, many believe a soul is judged. Warriors might get called to Valhalla. Saints might go to heaven and evil doers might go to hell. But what about someone who doesn't fall to any of those categories? Well, some of them end up like this. So there we go. Um, it says it's uh, it's from from the online web serial comes a story of reincarnation, comedy, winding passwords, existential redemption, all the tiny snake gods. So there you go. Um, the Snake Report is an online serial story found in several places, including the Royal Road. Um, it's been cleaned up. It's been collected and put up on Amazon. Um, this is a, a reincarnation little RPG story. The main character dies as a human, but is reborn as a tiny, tiny snake. Um, you you kind of follow his slice of life adventures as he lives. It levels up and survives in the modern world. Uh, the beginning of the story for me was a little slow. But once the main character levels up to enough to be to leave his little tiny hole in the ground uh, and adventurers are introduced to the storyline. The pace and the action really do pick up a lot in the story. Uh, on the game mechanics side, it's mostly relegated to the snake main character evolving um, as he levels, like he gets to choose between different powers and uh, different abilities. And you see his, his skills and his powers increase as he uses them more and more. Um, so there's our, our, the RPG mechanics this is absolutely little RPG. Um, and there's a good bit of humor as the main character tries to figure out the rules of the game world and what he can do with his skill points. Um, it's, it was honestly fun to see the ways the main character pushes the system, uh, to travel on a unique path to RPG advancement. Um, overall, this is just a fun story. If you like slice of life stories though, um, where the like serial nature of the story, this is going to be fine. And, and this definitely feels like a, a serialized story. Um, it, it's written in diary format, um, which means that it actually says like day one of the snake report. This is what happened to the character. Day two will be like another chapter. And, and, and it kind of follows that kind of journal or diary format. So it, 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 it very much is set up as like, Oh, something that was written over the course of like months and months online. And it's kind of, squished together, collected, edited, uh, cleaned up and put on Amazon. 
And again, this is just part one. Uh, so that uh, there apparently is going to be a part two that's first put on Amazon or sorry, Royal Road and then on Amazon again later. But it's an interesting story, definitely kind of cute. And if you're into reincarnation stories, um, this is this is pretty entertaining. Uh, for me, it gets a score of 7.3 out of 10. Uh, that's the Snake Report with a score of 7.3 out of 10. So there you go. Okay. Next one, uh, The Alchemist of Etheria, a little bit adventure written by Jared Mandani. It is uh, about 350 pages. Um, there is no official Amazon page count as of this recording. Um, it is $4.99. It is available on Kindle Unlimited. Here is the author's description of the story. Zach plans for the summer was easy enough. Pick a college, enroll, and spend the rest of his time building his alchemist in a new VR MMORPG called Etheria. But when he finds out his college money fund had been depleted and he has no more means for paying for the tuition fees, his plans need to change in an instant. With money to be made in this game, he now has to put the exploring part and all the fun aside to focus on earning every dollar back. And so he does, playing the only way he knows how, by finding and exploiting the game's loophole. Who cares if other players get killed and he loots them clean? After all, it's just a game, isn't it? Zack the Alchemist will quickly learn, however, that the world of Ethereum is much more than that. As he lets his greed dictate his actions and pulls one dirty trick too many, he opens up a portal that will unleash hell upon this virtual world. If that wasn't bad enough, as he dies at the hands of the Mega Boss, he is just freed. There's a glitch that happens in real life and locks Zack inside the game for good. Trapping his character, he will have to change his ways and start aligning with other players if he's to find the key back to the real world. But it's hard for such a loner as himself to start making friends, especially when you're under the penalty of permadeath and have to watch your level four, uh, your level four back because you've already made quite a few enemies. With his potion making skills and lousy starter, copper dagger for his soul, soul companions, Zack has the odds severely stacked against him. The slightest slip up could mean uh, the final game over. Okay, so that is the author's description, and it's accurate um, to a degree. Um, like a lot of that plot line that that's that describing that in that author description um doesn't happen to like mid story uh the story itself um in a lot of ways I, it, it wasn't entertaining for me personally because it didn't seem like it kn knew what it wanted to be like tried to be too many things and it kind of was wishy-washy between them and so it never related to any one of them very well um it starts as a story about again a bully teen graduating high school gets an expensive vr rig from his mom and is determined to make his living in the game then the main character um makes his alchemist character and shows that crafting is just button pressing which on its own was honestly disappointing because uh, whenever i see alchemist in a, in a title i'm like oh crafting and they're i mean it's sort of here it's more along the lines like oh he he gathers some ingredients and he pushes a button and as long as he has them, they get mixed together automatically. There's no real skill there. Uh, there's no real depth to that particular crafting option. It's just button press, which it is what it is. And it's fine. Um, and then in the story, he goes on to become a PK -er and a double crosser. Uh, he double crosses the guy who just happened to tell him all of his player versus player secrets, um, which again, very fortunate i guess for the character uh, then that then the main character abandons that goal to earn money uh, from taking gear from the other players killed and decides to take on a high level area uh at level three because he has like he he, he pked some guys and got some gear um and then midway through again literally halfway through the story it shifts to that stuck in the game model which was described in the in the in the novel description um and honestly that part doesn't what just wasn't entertaining either. Uh, like the entire story, I struggled to stay interested in uh, the main character or, or the shrilling because one, the main character is kind of a punk. He's a jerk. Um, and so it was hard to root for him. And then when he kind of sort of decides to change at that point, he's just, he's just whiny. Uh, and, and it was, so it's like, it's, it's a, a character that I found unapproachable or unlikable, I should say. Um, and the storyline itself wasn't particularly um, deep or interesting. Um, and there was no like, focus for what he was doing and then like halfway the story it shifts and like oh suddenly he's trapped in the game and he, and then there's permadeath i'm like oh that would have been like maybe an interesting first part of the story but i'm halfway through and i'm already kind of bored uh so for me it just didn't work in its entirety i, I was kind of bored through the entire thing it gets a score for me a five out of ten for the alchemist of Etheria, a little bit adventure uh with a score of meh uh of five out of ten there you go Okay, up next is Trial by Fire, a little RPG Dragon Rider adventure, our Kemi Online, uh, Online Chronicles, book number two, by James Osiris Baldwin. 
Okay, here we go. It is uh, 433 pages. It is $4.99. It is available on Kindle Unlimited. Here's the author's description. One man, one game, one adorable baby dragon. Two weeks ago, Hector Park cheated death by uploading his mind to the ultra-immersive fantasy RPG game, Arkemi. After exposing the rotten heart of, this, of an order of dragon knights, he's now on the run with a young queen dragon who could one day become the most powerful mount in the game. To get strong enough to face their enemies, they need a quest, a big one. Fortunately, Trouble has a way of finding Hector, and it does. In the form of a series of brutally murdered priests, a king in desperate need of a hero, and a beautiful fiery berserker. The risk, huge. The payoff, more gold than a dragon's hoard. There's only one problem. Arkemi is haunted by the ghost of a mad developer bent on making the game his personal playground, and now that the world outside has vanished in a storm of nuclear fire, there's no one left to stop him. Or at least, that's what he thinks, because Hector isn't the kind of man to take this shit lying down. There you go. Okay, uh, quick warning, there is a, a graphic sex scene towards the end of the story. Um, it's a small sex scene, it's not, I mean, it's a few pages long, basically. Uh, but just be aware that it is, it is there. If that's not your kind of thing, um, it's, it's very easily skippable. And again, it happens after like the resolution, like the bigger story plot. So just FYI. Okay. Uh, this is a, I, I actually like book one. It, it was very enjoyable. Um, book two is actually better in a lot of ways. Um, book two is a good follow up to, uh, to book one. It starts out a little slow as the main character summarizes kind of the big points of book up of the first book in the series. Uh, but then once the action hits fairly soon after that, uh, it continues throughout the entire novel, shifting the storyline to another location in, in, in this massive world was also a really good idea because in the first book, um, the 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 culture and the system in which the main character found himself felt a little flat and it felt um very prejudiced and it and for me as a reader it's kind of hard to figure out oh where where is the main character going to go from here because he kind of burned so many bridges and so start making sure the main character kind of got a fresh start um was honestly a, a very good idea for as far as like a writing point of view because he got uh, the author gets to describe an entire new culture he gets to describe an entire new uh, way of thinking as far as like from a cultural perspective like how um this, this new society these dragons and magic and other races and so there's there's a um good way to 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 do some more world building there um in addition to that there's an introduction of uh, of a, a few new um, players into the into the story that were interesting in their own rights and so they added a little more um variety of personality um to the storyline uh, and there's also in this particular novel this our storyline goes it's a mystery uh, a lot of the story is, is going to be the, this mystery involving these murders um intrigue if there's a few good plot twists in there and it's, again relatively interesting stuff and that is a shift from what book one was book one one it was very much um the story of a, of a player trapped in a game um even though he hadn't meant to be um and 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 kind of finding his path and the class he wanted and eventually introducing the dragon aspect which is again a, a late part of book one and in book two all that's already established the main character has his pet basically his pet dragon and that's part of the storyline as well like seeing this pet dragon from like a little small cute thing to something bigger as it levels and grows in the system um game mechanic wise in the story everything's basically the same as book one uh, the main character gets a few new powers um there's a little bit more craft side from other characters in the story and from the main character a little bit but it's not a big part of the story uh and also the stuff about the dragon also expands a little bit in that you get a peek into the the dragon's um development tree path a little bit which is of course neat but again nothing like really hugely vastly different or anything um overall a good a good solid read no big issues if you like book one you're probably gonna like book two even more so there you go i had a good time with it gets a score of 7.4 out of 10 that's trial by fire a little bit to dragon rider adventure or coming out online chronicles book number two with a score of 7.4 out of 10 there you go Okay, on to our next review. Uh, War God's Mantle Descent, a lit RPG harem adventure, The War God Saga, book number two, written by J.A. Hunter and Aaron Crash. Uh, it is uh, 303 pages. It is $4.99. It is available on Kindle Unlimited. Here's the author's review, uh, description, rather. A marine turned Greek god, an army of beautiful Amazons, an infernal enemy out to burn the world down. It's been three weeks since Jacob Murley crashed, crash-landed on the mythical island of Lycastia, 
and the newly minted war god finally has things under control. He's grown into his power, built his city, and earned the respect of his gorgeous, hard-charging cha Amazons. He's not in the clear yet, though. Hades still lives, and the mystical sigil holding him at bay is rapidly failing. Worse, a horde of new enemies is battering Listeria's, uh, Listeria's gates down, slowly grinding down Jacob's forces. But Jacob has a plan to get the upper hand. He's learned about a legendary weapon buried in a prehistoric world deep in the bowels of the island. A weapon with the power to kill even gods. If he can defeat the weapon's primary guardian and subdue an exiled titan, he might just be able to save the world. That's an awfully big if. So there you go. Okay. Um, there are some changes to the story. Uh, the, the fact that it's titling itself a little RPG harem adventure is a change... Uh, I think that's more of a, a, a marketing thing there. Um, but there is sort of a harem thing that goes on here. I'll get that to in a little bit. Um, the sequel uh, of the story really takes the action up a notch. Um, there's fights, there's leveling, there's upgrading, and then there's more fights. And it goes in that cycle. Um, this is a very action-oriented story where, where most of the story, I'd say easily... 70% uh, of it is is action stuff, action scenes. Um, and if you're, that's what you're looking for, you're going to find it here in spades. You're going to have a really good time here. Um, there's a little, there's a bit of crafting towards the more, more towards the beginning of the story. Town building and stuff, all that's kind of frightening a little bit. Um, but it's more of a minor aspect in book two than it was in book one, um, relative to the size of the story. Uh, game mechanic wise, there's nothing fundamentally new. The main character again gets new powers that he, lay, that he uses to lay down the hurt and all the new kinds of monsters that he and his Amazons fight. Um, the only real complaint I have as far as the game mechanics go is that I feel like I'm only reading half of the story this time. I'm only really like seeing half of like the game mechanics possible here. And that's more along the fun fact that um in this story there's the there's more of an introduction to the other player um and, and, and i say the respect like game terms like if, if our main character is one player he's a human from our world who's taking the, the mantle of the, of the uh of the war god then there's the other side of that um who's the opponent and he's also a human who becomes essentially a player um and that's earl echo earl this is not spoilery folks it was it's very abundant in the, in the book first book and um, and it talks about a little bit in, in, in this book as well. Um, but you know, that's, that's who the opponent is. And it's very quickly described in like the beginning of the story. So it's, it's not spoilery at all. Um, but you don't really get much information about like that particular side of the tech tree and by the particular side of the upgrade tree that the other side is using. Um, and so everything kind of feels a little off somehow. Um, like you get a, like a different variety of monsters and characters that are in powers, um, but you also get some things that are very similar to what, what, what the main character on, on, on the good guy side does. Um, and so, the, I mean, and, and a lot of this has to do, I guess, like my impressions of what, um, video games like this is kind of based on. For me, it feels like the, this series is based on like an RTS where you have your camp that you build and your resources that you gather and then you create your, 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 you know, your characters that you're, that you're going to fight with. And you have a particular, you know, branch of like skill, tech, magic, whatever it is that you can upgrade. Right. Um, but part of that on a, on a, on a, on, on an enjoyment side is also knowing what your opponent can possibly do. Um, it would be really horrible if like you played a game and you, and you couldn't see, you couldn't figure out what the other side was capable of basically. Um, and that's what this sort of feels like. So it feels a little comfortable as a reader because I'm seeing it from the point of view of like, oh, this is like an RTS game, but I don't know what the other side is doing. So I don't, I can't tell if like they're overpowered or um, if it makes sense on a game mechanic level, like when there are new things introduced um, and it feels like it's a little unbalanced on the, on the, on the opponent side. And that's mostly just because I, I, I don't know what the tech tree is over there. And I think that might be something that the author could add in the future in seeing like, oh, this is what the other side's skill and magic and tech tree are. So it kind of makes sense as far as like, oh, the things that he's building. And you can kind of gauge like, oh, he, his progression is, is different. And you can kind of guess like what he's doing. Um, but that doesn't appear here. So it, it feels a little wishy-washy or like a little one ivy and sometimes um and that's just my personal impression on the game mechanic side on the story side everything's pretty simple it's very straightforward the main character gonna fights he levels up he upgrades and then he fights some more that that's kind of it there is a storyline of like oh getting this this magical artifact who's a you know god slaying weapon potentially um but it's really kind of an excuse just to explore different parts of the island the dinosaur thing that's introduced on the cover uh, and in the novel description a little weird i'll be honest i'm like i think there's our pterodactyls with laser beams 
<laughs> it's a point. It's so that's a little it's a little odd. Um, but again, a good variety of monsters and fights. Um, again, this is this is mostly a, a, an action story. Um, on a small note, again, the harem stuff that's described in the title doesn't really exist. Um, it kind of comes down to the main character having a three way, um, which again feels out of character for the main character and also for the series as a whole, like in, in book one, for me at least, the main character was very much um, a proponent of, of, of not getting involved first time and then like, oh, maybe just a monogamous relationship with one of the characters. Um, and that has sort of, it feels like it's been pushed into a particular direction um, and it feels unnatural for the story, or at least for the, from my point of view of what I think the main character is. But again, it's also not a really big part of the story in the first place. Um, so the harem part of the story isn't a big part. The, the author basically doesn't go full hog on the harem side. It is kind of like a little little haremish uh, aspect of it. And I'm like, okay, I guess, I guess. Uh, so it is what it is. A lot of people, if they if they think of this as a harem book, they're going to be kind of disappointed because um, it probably doesn't go far enough for them. Um, and if you're not in harem stuff, what is here is like, it's not, it's not distracting the story at all. There's no hardcore sex. It's not graphic at all. It's, it's more fade to black. Uh, there's, you know, a, a single like, a sex scene in the beginning. Um, but again, it's, it's fade to black. Uh, so there's nothing graphic about it. Um, same time, again, it does for me at least feel out of character for the main character and also for the story, uh, personal opinion, obviously. Um, but other than that, I mean, overall good story again that emphasizes action uh i had a good time with it gets a score of 7.2 out of 10 uh, it's war god's mantle descent a little bit of harem adventure uh the war god saga book number two with the score of 7.2 out of 10 so there you go okay on to number six uh eden's gate the arena a little rpg adventure written by edward Brody. this is the fourth book in the best-selling Eden's Gate series, apparently. Um, it is 454 pages, $4.99. It is available on Kindle Limited. Uh, this novel has been doing really good uh, uh, for the last few weeks since it came out. It didn't, didn't come out this week. It came out a couple weeks ago. I just didn't have time to read it at that point, and this week was a little slower, so I went back and grabbed a story I was looking forward to reading anyways. Um, and it is entertaining as heck. Um, here's the author's description, though. Uh, Edgewood is under attack, and the threat of war lingers across the Serpent Sea. In order to protect their village, the members of Unity will need to work together to level up and find better gear. They'll need to lay the foundation of a castle that can serve as a fortification from intruders. But what if there's a better way? When Gunnar learns that the King of Highcastle will grant an audience to anyone who wins an arena championship, he decides to enter the competition as a gladiator. If he can earn a meeting with the king, with the ailing king, persuade him to stop Dryden Bloodletter, and he can save Edward and potentially countless other lives. He'll also get his name posted in every arena, which could lead Rachel one step closer to finding him. The arena is a spectacle where people gather to watch fighters, put their skills to the test, earn fame, and take home gold. Does Gunnar have what it takes to become champion, or has he bitten off more than he can chew? So there we go. Um, again, short short review i already know i liked it before i even started and i know it's very right um this is a good story that tended to be more slice of life than i thought it was honestly from um the description from the cover art i thought this was going to be more a focus on the gladiator battles for like the arena battles and it was not it was very surprising like, the main character really only does like um two or three battles and that's it the entire story uh, as far as like in the arena there's a lot of other action scenes there's a lot of her slice of life stuff where you're following the main character as he does some town building in his in his community of edgewood um does some trading does some crafting and he goes on these little slice of life adventures those little bit of romance but again it's mostly a, a slice of life story as you're following the main character and that and that's totally in theme with the rest of the series and then that's what you're kind of doing for for a lot of it i think um in the last couple books though there was more of an overarching storyline and the main character was like traveling and doing things um but this one just kind of returns to a more chill kickback kind of slice of life um storyline and that's not necessarily bad uh it is just a different expectations that i had going into this novel um than it ended up being um for me i had a good time with it um good story um really <laughs> wicked uh, cliffhanger at the end though um but again it, it's a great lead into like hopefully book number five whenever that comes out uh but i had a good time with it gets a score of 7.5 out of 10 for me eden's gate the arena a little rpg adventure with a score of 7.5 out of 10 so there you go easy review okay uh, last review, uh, Cities and Chains, an apocalyptic lit RPG adventure, The System Apocalypse, book number four by Tao Wong. 
here it is. It's uh, 338 pages. It is $4.99. It is available on Kindle Unlimited. And here's the author's description. It's been over a year since the system came to Earth, bringing blood and monsters in equal measure. Having left Whitehorse, John and his team traveled down to British Columbia, running into the new dangers from aliens and humans alike. Facing with, faced with the new challenges and new enemies, John steps up once more to set things right and teach a few aliens why you never put humanity in chains. Cities in Chains is book four in the System Apocalypse series, um, and that's just some more stuff. Okay. Um, again, easy review. Very beloved series. I've enjoyed every single novel in this particular um, storyline. It is very much a slice of life story, though, where you just kind of follow the main character as he goes off and does stuff. And this one's no different. Um, it's a nice addition. Um, there's a lot of personal growth to the main character. Um, there is more town building here in, in the respect that the main character um, has more control over it. I don't want to spoil things. Um, it's a good action. There's good adventure, new RPG powers. And did I mention good action? Uh, it really is worth noting twice. Like there's some really good action scenes. Um, and at the end of book number three, the main character had left, um, the town he had been based in for the first three books, um, white castle, white, white horse, white horse. That's what it is. Uh, and so in the beginning of the story, it, it's kind of a travel story in that he's visiting different areas. He's picking up survivors, leading them to safety, um, leveling up, of course, um, and kind of just trying to find a new place for himself to see how the larger world is is dealing with the the system that's been imposed on, on the, the RPG system that's been imposed on the, on the world by aliens and, and how they've you know, been dealing with it and have new classes and monsters and uh, yeah, some people are good, some people are bad. It's a very interesting um, first arc of the story. Um, and it, that, that alone is entertaining, but then again, you get into more town building stuff and some more interesting, um, political and, um, combat conflicts. Uh, and again, I'm trying not to support anything for you guys if you want to read it, but for me, a really good time, entertaining as heck, um, for me it gets a score of 7.6 out of 10, which is the best score of the, of the particular episode. Um, that city in chains, I had a good time with it. It really did. Like I, I've, I've been looking forward to like reading this for as soon as it came out. Uh, definitely one of the first ones I read this week. Um, Cities in Chains, an apocalyptic little RPG, the system apocalypse book number four, uh, with the score of 7.6 out of 10. There we go. And that's it. We're done. Short week because um, fewer things came out. There you go. Um, thank you very much for listening, for watching, ladies and gentlemen. Um, and if you want to follow us, I really do encourage you to do so on Facebook. We have a little bit podcast, uh, Facebook page there. We're also on Twitter, YouTube, uh, where you can see all the back episodes of this particular podcast there as well. Um, we also have a Patreon page if you want to support us there to help keep this, uh, podcast free of ads and free to the populace and free to everybody, uh, on a weekly basis. And you can also, of course, check out our, our, our webpage at littlebitpodcast.com and check out our great, um, recommendation page that has, of course, links, um, to everything we talk about today and all the back catalog of databases a little bit of stuff if you're looking for something in particular um if you enjoy the podcast of course and want to support us in any way shape or form you can have all the ways to do so at litrpgpodcast.com slash support so there you go thanks for hanging out with us today ladies and gentlemen and until we can hang out again folks remember to read some lit rpg and also don't forget to uh, comment on the background which one you like the best see you later goodbye everybody <laughs>